Genesis 48, just a brief what the plan is, 48 this week, 49 next week, 50, two weeks, and then September start a long study on Acts and some of the other epistles that came that were written during Acts. <clears throat> so we focus on Genesis 48, the blessing of Jacob over Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and we will look at their future role in the tribes of Israel. Okay, Genesis 48. One to seven. And it came to pass after these things that one that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick, and he took with him two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. So Joseph gets the words that Jacob's probably about to die. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. Because you know Jacob's now his name's been changed to Israel. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at, at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee and I will make of thee a multitude of people and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. So Jacob's kind of reflecting back of the call that God had on him. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt are mine, as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy issue which thou begettest after them shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren and their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Paden, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan, the way, when yet there was a, but a little way to come unto uh, Ephrathah, and I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. So where Jesus will be born almost 2,000 years later, that's where Rachel died. And also if you remember, when Herod slow, slays his children two years and under, he quotes the passage from Jeremiah, says Rachel weeping for her children. So that's where Rachel, that's how he kind of connect, makes that connection there. So thousands of years later, that's where Jesus uh, would be. All right, let's take a look at this now in the selection of uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. First of all, so we talked about the 17 years last week, how the first 17 years of Joseph's life, uh, Jacob and him were together. And then finally, when Jacob and Joseph were reunited, God gave them uh, seven, seven more sons with him. Joseph presents his two sons before Jacob, and he gives a re revelation and how now Ephraim and Manasseh will become tribes of their own. All right, next week, um, we're going to look at the, Israel's blessing on each of the 12 tribes. And as you know, Jacob had 12 sons. We'll just go by first line. We have Reuben, uh, Simeon, Levi, Judah, the first four. Dan, uh, what was that? Dan, Asher, Naphtali, Gad. Zebulun, Issachar, and then finally Joseph and Benjamin. All right, we've got a couple of people around right for a reason. All right, so these will be the 12 tribes. However, we know Joseph, sons Ephraim and Manasseh, will become tribes of their own. So these two replace him. That will make 13. But then later we'll find out that Levi will be cho chosen as a priestly tribe and won't really have a tribe of his own. So so the 12, when, when the 12 tribes are listed after the time of Moses, it will, won't have Levi and Joseph will not be in the list. Ephraim and Manasseh will be taking this place. But Ephraim and Manasseh, whenever they're listed all throughout the rest of the Old Testament, they're both descendants of Joseph. So Jacob is foreseeing this into the future. Now, uh, we'll get into this, we'll get into Levi next week, but we'll see. The prophecy over Levi at the time is not that good, but he does commits an act in Exodus that is commendable or one of his descendants, and that's why they're chosen uh, later as a priestess. So just a little tidbit there in the 12 tribes. So the future of the 12, 12, 12 tribes, yeah. tough one to say there, will be take Levi and Joseph out, Ephraim, Manasseh, add it in. You'll see that all throughout the Old Testament. And even later, there's a split of uh, Manasseh 
and, and some theorize, I'm thinking to myself too, that that's Manasseh's two sons when one goes to the east of, of Canaan and one goes to the west when they conquer the promised land. Land, but we're not studying that now. Huh. So there's their that set up. Now next, Jacob or Israel uh, blesses Ephraim and Manasseh. Let's take a look at this blessing. Eight through sixteen. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, "Who are these?" And Joseph said unto his father, "They are my sons whom God hath given me in this place." And he said, "Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them." Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has shown me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. So I guess Joseph had pre presented him before them, and the tradition is to bless the older one. So I guess uh, Joseph presented uh, Manasseh here, firstborn, and Ephraim here, the secondborn, and Jacob, instead of placing his right hand on Ephraim, or instead of Manasseh, the oldest, he does it on Ephraim, which we'll talk about later in the chapter why he did that. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before him my father Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fell me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. So this is kind of a the blessing of Joseph, that, J, uh, that the, the Isaac blessing that he gave to Jacob, the Jacob blessing. He is, instead of passing on to his son Joseph, he's like spreading it out into both of his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And now Jacob, although deceptively, uh, although we haven't covered this, we're all familiar with the story many years ago, uh, now Israel was placed... As Isaac blessed Jacob, although he, like he said, was deceptively blue, was probably still in the Lord's plan. Now Israel is placing his blessing on Joseph's two sons. Uh, in the next chapter, Joseph will, will bless all 12 of his tribes and give kind of sons and give a prophecy over them. We'll discuss a little bit each about them. But let's look at some well-known people uh, from the tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh. And I was looking up trying to find some of the main names there. So let's first look at Manasseh. So Manasseh is Joseph's firstborn. So over these 400 years, Manasseh becomes a tribe in Egypt and his numbers grown into the thousands and thousands. And then of course they settle the promised land. All right, so after the land is conquered, the first thing we have is a time of the judges. And one of the most well-known uh, judges uh, is a descendant of Manasseh and that is Gideon. Uh, we all know Gideon, he's the one who put out the fleece and, you know, ask for, you know, the Lord to be dew in the fleece and ground dry. And the next day, the fleece dry and the ground filled with dew. Uh, and he was also the one who uh, had the armies reduced down. First, first those who are afraid go home. Then finally, those who come down and, and lap the dog like a water go home. So that was that getting were uh, well known. And Jephthah, I believe, didn't Brother Thorne, I believe he had him in his sermon the other week. He was the famous one. Uh, Lord, what, the first person who comes out my door, I'll offer it up to you, and it's his only child, his daughter. And then, of course, the big question is, did he sacrifice her, or was she just prevented from marrying the rest of his life? And the and remark it makes at that closing chapter, uh, and she said, just let me spend some time with the, my friends, as she goes up into the, into the mountains and bewails her virginity. So it makes you think maybe it was just he prevented, she gave her life in total sacrifice to the Lord. There would be no children, and then that was his only child, so no offspring for him. I don't believe the Lord would have him do that. And then also one more, uh, less for many. Sometime in the Judges, there's two or three, they just list their name and give about one verse about them. One was named J.R., and they used the phrase, he had 30 sons, 
who wrote on 30 donkeys, if that phrase is familiar to you. Anyway, all three of those judges were descended from Manasseh. So I forgot how many judges are. There's different lists. There's up to 15 or 16, but there's probably as many who came from Manasseh than anyone else. Now let's look at some well-known Ephraimites. Ephraim is the youngest son, but he is the one who was blessed by, jo uh, by Jacob to receive more of the blessing. Uh, one of the most well-known is Moses' successor uh, from the tribe of Ephraim. That was Joshua. So Joshua, uh, when the 12 sp spies are sent out, and they list them all by tribe, Caleb was from Judah, and Joshua was from Ephraim. And we all know about Joshua. Uh, Deborah, the female judge, she was from the tribe of Ephraim. We all know her story and lists up as one of the heroes of faith, one of the early female leaders in the Bible, and Abdon as well. Also, <clears throat> the first king of Israel uh, and the head of the first dynasty, Jeroboam, was from Ephraim. If you'll remember when uh, uh, Rehoboam, Solomon's son, um, you know, he was given the choice. They came to him and said, treat us well and we'll serve you. And then he, he listens, ignores the older people, listens to the younger men and says, my little finger will be stronger than my father's whole hand. And then they go in rebellion and the kingdom is divided, and this David's line goes over Judah, and we have several dynasties in the Israel king, but the first one is Jeroboam, and he came from the tribe of Ephraim. So there's some of the well-known people who would be taught in Bible history from Manasseh and Ephraim. I'm sure there were others, but there were some of the main ones that I found out in my research. So that's a little history of what's happening to them. But as, we go, as we go into the latter part of the chapter, let's take a look at why Jacob chose Manasseh and what some of the instances, many instances we'll find in Genesis where the firstborn was not chosen. And well, first of all, let's read it. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head into Manasseh's head. He might have just been thinking, Jacob's 147. You know, he's, he's lucky he can move his, move his hand. He just might be a little confused. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, and thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he said, Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again into the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the land of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. <clears throat> so again, Jacob closes out by saying, you will get two portions for Joseph, one Ephraim and one Manasseh. So in a sense, Joseph is getting a double blessing. <clears throat> so the conclusion of this week's lesson, what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at almost an, an abundant of examples where the firstborn was not chosen. Now, I'm not an expert in here, but all throughout the Bible, we hear I was always the firstborn male receives a blessing. I heard someone talking on the prodigal son. I forgot what. Uh, the amount they're saying, uh, if, if the father had an abundance of children, the firstborn son still received a considerable amount more than anyone else. So that's just by birth. And has it popped up? Um, you're at 14. But earlier it came up right after when okay. you said prayer. It just said low battery. Okay. And then I hit that button, okay. but it's still going. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Right. It right. might come up at 10 again, too. Yeah. No, just hit the same thing. Thank okay. you. Okay. So... Uh, there's bylot, that's biological, that's something you have no control of. But we know the Lord chooses people based on not their birth order, but their character and what yes. he sees in them. Yes. And we're going to find an abundant examples. Uh, all of these, except for my final one here, and there will be others, are from the book of Genesis. All right, so the very first one. All right, who is Adam and Eve's first child? You know, they're... It doesn't say specifically, but the first one it gives account of is Cain. There's Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Of course, 
king murders Abel. He's sent off to a land and forms basically his own nation. Basically, you find two, two nations are almost formed in that pre-flood world, King's descendants and Adam's descendants. But Adam's descendants come from Seth. From Seth came the line of uh, Enoch and Methuselah and Noah. And, of course, Noah, three sons, repopulated the earth. So all of us on the earth, not only are we descendants of Adam, we're descendants of Seth. So there's what there's example number one of not the firstborn being chosen. Of course, what happened? Cain, of course, forfeited this right by his act of rebellion. Next, um, back again to our Genesis series. We know Noah had three sons: Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right. Uh, now, in one passage of Scripture, says Noah lived 500 years and had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And one person's implied that he had triplets because that he had them all the same year. But we'll see in other passages of Scripture how it lists the, uh, the birth order. We won't get into them now, but from, from years of many, many people studying researches, it probably appears that Japheth was firstborn, Shem, secondborn, and Ham is third and is the youngest of the three. You know, we have other children that didn't go on the We don't know. Okay, just a little trivia, all right? As Europeans, who did we come from? Anyone know which of the three? Who's our who's our great, 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 great <laughs> grandfather? Japheth. And he's the one Noah kind of puts a blessing on that has uh, will enlarge his tent. And seems like, you know, the Europeans were the most successful and prosperous and brought technology to the world. Uh, Ham is the one whose son Canaan was cursed, and through all of Cain, uh, Ham's children came all the seven nations of Canaan land. So you remember where it lists and about says God will deliver you from the Canaanites, Jebusites, I think it's some Girgashites, Hivites, uh, Perizzites, or seven total. All of these are descended from Ham and his son Canaan. That's cursed. Shem is second born. And through Shem, this comes the line of uh, Abraham. Shem is the, I think there's nine or ten, ten or eleven from Shem to Abraham, whether or not, depending on which genealogy you look at. So Shem, our facts, is Selah, Abraham, finally, eventually, Abraham is born. So all the human race comes through Seth, not the firstborn. All the human race are, are God's chosen people. Abraham comes through Shem, not the firstborn. So again, Lord just doesn't pick things biologically. All right, next in the line, Abraham. Uh, so when the time comes, the Lord's going to begin his process. He chooses a family we talked about. Did Terah, Abraham's father, receive the initial call and not fulfill it, or was it Abraham? More than likely, I believe it was Abraham. And Terah had three sons, um, Haran, or Haran, which was Lot's father, and he died in the land of Ur before they left. And then there was Haran. No, I looks at Haran. Nahor, I'm sorry, the other one. Nahor um, was also Terah's father. He named his son after his grandfather. But he was the one who uh, Reuben and Rebekah were descended from. So who? So when I, when Abraham, Abraham found a bride for Isaac. He sent him off to his uncle's uncle's family. And then Abraham was the youngest of the three, and he was the one the Lord chose. So once again, when what all right, so the whole human race comes from Seth, not the firstborn. The uh, God's plan of salvation uh, through a nation will come through Shem, who wasn't the firstborn second. And then finally, when we get to the father of the faith, Abraham. He's not the firstborn. He's the youngest of the three. So again, God is not chosen based on strictly birth order. He chooses knowing the person. All right, next. Who's next in line? All right. Who's, who's in the line? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, we know Isaac, not the firstborn. Ishmael was. Ishmael was the child of the flesh, as they say, of man's way of helping God's promises be fulfilled. But it was an Isaac, my seed shall be called. So 
Again, another example. God bless Ishmael, send him out. That's where most of the Arab people come from. Ishmael today, from Abraham's plan B, helping God out, you know, getting ahead of God. Uh, we're, we're, we're finishing out Genesis. We've done the first part of Genesis. Maybe someday we'll come back and do the, the middle of it. We'll talk about Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, and all of them. So again, another example. Seth over Canaan, over Cain. Shem over uh, Japheth. Abraham over Nahor and Haran. And then Isaac over Ishmael. Who's next in line? Although they're born on the same day and minutes apart, Esau is still the firstborn. So I imagine many times in those Middle East, if the firstborn were twin sons, I imagine many times the second son, if I just, just came out of there first, I would have been ahead of him. And then we all know, what is Jacob doing when Esau comes out grabbing his heel? So and that was his reputation the rest of his life. Now there's a lot of deep, deep passages in the Bible on God's will and, and predestination and choosing one over the other. But it's here we believe in the free will of believers, and we know the Lord <coughs> knows them by their heart. He knows what kind of people they are. Jacob, Jacob is a conniver, but he's also deep down after the heart of God, where Esau is just after the flesh. Um, today, I'm having beef stew for lunch. Whenever I, That's one of my favorite dishes. Whenever I think of that, I think of Esau. He probably loved stew, probably something like that, maybe with deer in it, but he forfeited his birthright just because he was hungry. I think he makes the phrase, what good is that going to do me if I'm about to die? Now, he wasn't going to die. I mean, he could probably just go on a little bit further, and as, uh, you know, they probably had something there to eat for him. That's uh, what does a person of the flesh do? A person of the flesh goes for gratification right now, with no thoughts of consequences, just living right for the moment. And so Esau uh, threw that away. And then, like I said, we have, we're not covering this middle section of, of Genesis, but uh, you know Isaac is blessing Jacob, thinking it's Esau. And even though he might even call it Esau's name, Jacob is the one receiving the blessing. And then Esau uh, comes in almost and makes it sound like it's the moment Jacob walks out of the tent. And Esau's furious. He said, bless me too, Father. And what does Isaac say? Even though Isaac uh, favored Esau, he said, Jacob is the one. He said, for some reason, the Lord is the Lord known this, and blessed he will be. And we can certainly say the nation of Israel has been blessed over the years. Now, it's had pain. It's been persecuted. It's been punished. But, but I mean, the, uh, the percentage of, of contributions made by those people who are descended from the children of Israel is unbelievable. And all stems back to that blessing of Isaac over Jacob, and once again, not the firstborn chosen. So one example after the other. Next, what have we been talking about uh, all this thing on Joseph? <coughs> Judah, okay, even Joseph is not selected to be the one. Uh, you know, Joseph gets the birthright, even though he's 11th born. Judah's fourth born, but Judah is the one through whom who Messiah will come. So he's fourth born, but uh, Judah is the leader all throughout the Old Testament. Uh, his name means praise. Um, when the time for the kingdom to be set up comes through him, and of course the Lord himself is descended from Judah. So, and we see Judah, although at the very, the first signs of him uh, showing some leadership when they first captured Joseph. He was the one who said, let's not kill him. And then when all this going back forth to Egypt, we're talking about in a few weeks, Judah is always the leader. He's the one who speaks up. He's the one who's telling his father, take my sons if I don't bring him back. He's the one when Benjamin's caught with the thing, who tells the story, says, listen to the story. Um, we can't, you can't take Benjamin, said, uh, and explains the, all that happened with the, with the brother Joseph, not of course realizing Joseph's the one he's talking to and Judas has take me instead. So we see Judas become a spiritual leader and he is the one in this tribe. And we'll, and when Jacob pronounces his blessing and prophecy and all that, we'll talk about that next week. And once again, not firstborn, fourthborn as a matter of fact. <coughs> and then again, we come to here, which leads us up to here, Ephraim and Manasseh. So... Manasseh is the firstborn. I remember that name because Joseph says he's caused me to forget my problems and all the suffering he had. 
Ephraim is second. Now, I should do a study into this, but every time I look into the tribes, it seems like Manasseh's number is larger than Ephraim, so there must be some sort of significance of why Jacob pronounced a blessing upon Ephraim over Manasseh. Maybe I'll look more into that later. But again, another example. So the whole book of Genesis, um, all we heard, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and uh, Ephraim. Abraham, not firstborn. Isaac, not firstborn. Jacob, not firstborn. Joseph or Judah, not firstborn. Ephraim, not firstborn. So, so it's not only is it on occasion the firstborn is not, the firstborn is never chosen. Remember also back to here, Reuben, he forfeited his birthright with his action. All right, now I have one more selection, not in the Bible. Who was the youngest? Uh, here's a story in the Bible. The youngest was selected of a group of brothers. Anybody know who that would be? This is not in Genesis, later on in the Old Testament. Hmm? David. Yes. <laughs> so Samuel was, you know, Lord says, I've rejected Saul. Uh, go to uh, the house of Jesse. So they go to Jesse there, and the firstborn walks in, and you know I think he's strong and tall. And Samuel says, "Surely this must be it." And says, "No, the Lord has rejected him." And uh, you know maybe the Lord knows him later on. We'll see. He makes us like a like a jealous remark to David when he comes right before he kills Goliath. Why have you Why have you come here to spy on us, or just because of your curiosity? And then the next one, Samuel says, "Surely him." Apparently all seven come before him and they're almost standing up there and they say, well, I guess, I guess I missed it. It wasn't just, then Jesse casually says, oh yeah, there's one more, uh, the youngest, he's out tending the sheep, almost of surely not him. And then, you know, Samuel directed by the spirit of God and David walks in and then, and then immediately Samuel, it hits him. That's the one, he's the one. And who's David? You know, the great king of Israel, although flawed, uh, he was still the hero. He is the one, you know, that is revered today. He is through him, through the line of the Messiah, king. Every king of Judah directly descended from David. And Joseph and Mary both descended from David. Joseph through the line of kings uh, and Mary through his other son biologically. So help fill in the Lord for prophecy. So there's many examples. The Lord doesn't choose based on biology or simply on the traditions of firstborn made by men, he chooses on the person who will be the right one to lead. So that's how we're going to wrap it up this week. Kind of a good lesson. We kind of jumped out of Genesis. And like I said, next week, is we're going to go over all 12 sons of Jacob and see what their future uh, was. And we'll maybe even talk about what they're most known for throughout the Old Testament or who was the most famous people from their tribes. All right, any other questions or comments as we close here?